I'd like to call to order the Clarkston Independence District Library Board of Trustees meeting for December 13th, 2021. The meeting is called to order at 6.38. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll, please. Jan Gaffney? Here. Stan Green? Here. Elson McFadden Kiesling? Nancy Moon? Here. Marilyn Pomeroy? Here. Ann Rose? Here. Chris Schull? Here. Julie Meredith? Here. I'll accept a motion for approval of the agenda. I shall move. Second. second. We got that? No. No. Okay. Who, who moved first? Did you? Ann Ann made the motion. And you seconded? Well, I was one of them, so. I There's two of us, so just pick somebody. <laughs> it's not, not important. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. nay. Motion is carried. Call to the public. <laughs> <laughs> Questions or comments for Laura? Thank you to the friends for a nice report. We will close the call to the public at this time. Today is the public hearing on the 2022 budget. It is opening at 640. We don't have much of a public wishing to say anything tonight. <laughs> Do you have any comments you would like to make, Director? Uh, not at this time, I guess. Okay. <laughs> In that case, the call to the public is closed at 641. <laughs> <laughs> we have a long consent agenda tonight. There are 12 items on it. Look down, make sure there isn't anything any individual would like to address. I will accept a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll move it. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion is carried. Library statistics. Okay, so in your statistical report, um, just a couple things that I wanted to point out. Uh, while we are seeing slightly fewer visitors than uh, last month, which is pretty traditional between Thanksgiving and, and the New Year's holiday, um, what we are seeing is more visitors in November of this year than last year, obviously. Um, we're seeing more computer users. We're seeing more wireless users in the building. Um, we're seeing, uh, we added a few adult programs. Where we're seeing less is information questions, which I think is really interesting because last year at this time, um, 
between holiday, between Christmas, and we were um, just doing curbside. So we were doing obviously a lot more um, questions over the phone, and that I think this is an indication where you're seeing these higher numbers in person and lower numbers with um, questions is that people are coming in and serving themselves. But we're glad to see people back in the building. Um, and you can kind of see that's a little bit different than last year. So. Which we like to see. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very nice, isn't it? Are there any questions for Julie on any of these items? We have three pages of statistics. Our record keeping of statistics has been holding steady. We've been having trouble with that before. Well, we were we had some trouble with our people counter, and we've got that under control now. And um, and in terms of statistics. Um, when they do the gathering, it's, it's when there's turnover of staff, it's getting those numbers gathered and who's going to gather them for the various departments and that. So we've got that back under control again. Okay, excellent. All right, then let us hear the library director's report. Okay. Um, at the November 29th special meeting, the library board appointed Molly Weiner um, as our new school outreach coordinator with a start date to be agreed upon by the candidate in the library administration. And we are pleased to welcome Molly to our team on Monday, no, uh, December 27th. Um, on Wednesdays, December 1st at about 1.30 p.m., a patron dropping off book donations at the delivery door um, drove her vehicle into the west side of the library, hitting the outside wall of the director's office. This caused a fair amount of damage to the building, creating a hole in the bricks, breaking out metal studs and drywall, shifting the windows in that office and the office next door, and damaging the desk, computer, and carpet. 911 was called. None of the staff was injured, and EMS cared for the driver, who is also okay. Allied Building Services came to close up the wall uh, temporarily. The library's insurance company was called to begin the damage claim, and the insurance adjuster came out the next day to assess the damage. We've contacted a couple of contractors to quote the work to repair the building, um, and Library Design Associates has been contacted to assist with the re uh, replacement of the office furniture. Um, and I have a temporary office set up in the conference room. So if anybody's looking for me, I'm on the other end of the building now. And if you come to see her, wear a jacket. I, no, I've, I've got a little heater now, I'm all good. So <laughs> we've got the heat problem under control. Um, so hopefully we'll have a contractor selected soon and we'll get that work started and, and get that taken care of. Um, the library's annual state aid report that goes to the Library of Michigan has a reporting period of October 1st, 2021 to February 1st, 2022 and covers data from the most recently completed fiscal year. Because we have a January to December fiscal year, the data to be submitted covers 2020. I've been working on uh, completing the submission of this data and anticipate having a report included in the, in the January board packet. Uh, next item, I'm also in the process of submitting our statistical and wage data to the Detroit Suburban Library Roundtable, the SLRT survey. This is the collaborative effort of the public libraries of all sizes in Southeastern Michigan to provide comparative informa uh, information on library services, budgets, salary, benefits, et cetera. This timely information will be released shortly after the new year begins so that it may be used for planning the next budget. Uh, next item, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS, launched a grant project to assist Michigan Public Libraries to safely deliver services inside libraries, outdoors, and online. The MI83 TLC for Technology Libraries and Communities grant will distribute technology kits, online programming kits, and outdoor programming kits. Libraries may request any or all of the kits or their components. Requests will be prioritized based on need. Our library staff has reviewed what is available and requested a kit and additional components that we feel we need and will assist us as we continue our efforts to deliver library services in creative new ways. The request form is due December 13th, 2021, so we hope we'll be hearing uh, the results of that soon. Um, next item, earlier this year, the library received two memorial donations that will be used towards specific projects to serve our community's youth. The first, in memory of friend of the library, Deb Locker, will be used to create Deb's Book Nook, a unit that we placed in the children's area that will feature both shelving and seating. Another memorial in memory of Melvara will be used toward updates uh, to the teen lounge that will make it comfortable and flexible for teens who are studying, working in group, on group projects, or simply enjoying the library in their free time. Uh, more details about these projects will be shared soon. Uh, 
Uh, next item on Friday, December 3rd, the Youth Department hosted their second annual drive through Santa event. This program features six stations with a variety of handouts, activities, and crafts that can be gathered or completed from the comfort of the family vehicle. The last station provides an opportunity for kids to talk to Santa and leave a letter that will be answered by Santa's helpers. Over 80 cars participated in this fun activity. Feedback was very positive and many parents asked if we would be doing it again next year. We wondered if they would want an in-person thing next year, but they seem to really like this, so we'll see. <laughs> um, and then collaboration, uh, I'm just gonna reiterate that the Friends of the Library hosted their annual holiday book sale and boutique on Saturday, December 4th. Um, as Laura pointed out, they brought in nearly $3,000. And in addition, the Church of the Resurrection hosted their holiday bake sale in the lobby with proceeds from, um, from their event assisting local nonprofits. Excellent. Any questions, comments? Okay, let's move on. Regular business. We have a review and approval of the 2022 budget. Okay, so you have, you have the budget in your packet and we uh, dug in depth into this at the um, special meeting, the workshop on the budget. Um, just a few things that I'm going to highlight in this. Um, so the millage that was approved uh, in 2014 was for 1.25 mills. Um, Headley has rolled that down to 1.1525. Um, you'll remember we talked about this when we approved the millage rate in September. Um, that that is slightly lower um, because there were properties in um, the township and in the city where people, um, due to COVID, went out of their way to do improvements. And so instead of um, them being taxed on improvements that they chose to make, um, we rolled the millage rate back in order to only um, capture the taxes for things that were just natural growth in the property values. So that did um, lower that millage rate a little bit more um, than Hadley had done it. Uh, the total um, estimated revenues are $2,247,149 in 2022. Um, that comes from a variety of sources. Uh, we have our millage, which brings in $2,165,349. Um, state aid, which I put in at 15000 um, you'll remember when we talk about state aid, it comes in two payments, and I usually budget in just one payment worth because if something happens, it's that second payment that we don't get. So I worry about budgeting it in just in case. You know, times are a little uncertain. Um, but we are actually anticipating a little bit more in state aid this year if all goes well. Uh, penal fines is another one that has ranged in, since I've been here anywhere from forty to $72,000. Um, I budget that one in a little conservatively because we just don't know what penal fines will be. But so much of that is dependent on the court costs and those kinds of things. So um, it's a little uncertain, but it has been holding fairly stable in the sixty-eight dollars to $72,000 range for the last few years. Um, fines and fees, we have been uh, waiving fines for the past um, over a year, and so um, we budgeted that one very low. This does not uh, mean that um, we are not collecting damage and lost material fees. Um, we are merely waiving um, late charges. Uh, duplicating and photocopying, that particular amount, we always have to kind of judge that based on historical usage. We are seeing a lot more photocopying and printing going on lately than um, we expected, but we don't know how that will hold for the year, so we try to make sure that that's a conservative number and um, will hold true to what we'll probably bring in. Uh, and then interest, that one is just based on historic fact. We put that in at 10,000. Um, and then E-rate, E-rate is the um, federal grant that helps us pay for our broadband internet. And that is based on the number of kids in the school system that are eligible for the free lunch program. And that usually ranges between um, three to $5,000. Technically what we get is $5,000, but it comes to us because we're on a different fiscal year um, than this program is. Um, sometimes we get 3,000 and some years we get 5,000, so I always put it in at three um, in case uh, it toggles and we don't know how much we're gonna be getting, so. Uh, in terms of the guiding principles for the budget, um, we have been uh, coming back from the pandemic, we're seeing a lot more people in the building, um, so we are looking at being able to do uh, more traditional services in the coming months, but we are still trying to make sure that 
uh, we're providing uh, safe opportunities for people to inter interact with the library and do programming. From employment cost assumptions, um, we've, we went through quite a lot of uh, conversation with the staffing committee about employee costs and that. Um, so I'm not gonna dwell a lot on that because you've already talked at this, at, about this at length. Um, staffing usually accounts for 50 to 65% of the library's budget. Um, staffing has accounted for 59% of the operating budget for the past four years. Um, and then due to fall wage corrections and an addition of two full-time positions, we are seeing a, a slightly larger number there. Um, and it accounts for 62% of budget this year. Okay, so let's go in and talk about the operating. That's mostly what we needed to talk about both at the, um, at the budget workshop and also tonight. So there's a decrease in subscriptions um, and that's caused by the elimination of some online databases that were um, basically COVID lockdown specific. Um, we're seeing a, a slight decrease in the operating supplies due to the completion of some long-term projects in the technical services department um, and some things being shifted into that equipment maintenance line. Um, there's an increase in audit fees to accommodate a possible change uh, since that has been a constant for the past three years. We have a decrease in professional and contract services due to the completion of a number of projects that we have been working on. Um, the special event line uh, decreased slightly due to increased support from the Friends of the Library and community sponsors. Um, there is an increase in the tele in telephone due to server provider costs um, have been changing. Um, we did increase mileage a little bit. We had lowered mileage significantly when everything was being done virtually. We are seeing some more in-person meetings and in-person training opportunities, so we put that mileage back in there. Um, the printing budget decreased now that fewer mailings are needed um, as the number of library visitors increases again, although we do have um, funding set in there so that we can do um, an educational mailing about the millage, which will take place in August, millage renewal. Uh, there's a slight decrease in insurance that reflects actual costs the past few years. Um, the building and grounds maintenance budget um, is increasing as the facilities coordinator catches up on repairs and maintenance that had to be deferred during COVID when contractors were not always available to do that needed work. So we are trying to do a little bit of catch up in 2022. There's an increase in equipment maintenance to accommodate a project to replace the library's calendar software and also develop a mobile app for the library. We did talk about that at the budget workshop at length. Um, there's a decrease in conferences and workshops because many trainings are still being offered in a virtual format, which is less costly. Um, the point at which we are able to do more in-person training, I will of course be asking to raise that number up again to make sure that we can do appropriate training for the staff. Um, as discussed by the board, uh, the building line will have capital improvement projects added to it during the year from fund balance. These projects were written into previous budgets, but due to COVID could not be executed and the funds reverted back to fund balance. So instead of putting in the operating budget for this year, um, that money went into fund balance, we'll recapture that money and put it back in as those projects come up um, the specific projects that we've talked about are um, reworking this meeting room, um, a backup generator. Uh, we are doing the teen space, which is being supplemented by, um, by memorial donor money. Uh, the book budget increased to accommodate additional uh, e-collection development. And the audiovisual reduced um, to shift funds to that e-collection um, in the book budget. So... Um, any questions or comments or concerns about any of the information in the budget? No, just good job putting it all together mm -hmm. and explaining it clearly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, you've been sticking with me as we worked through it over the past several, usually we do this in September, but this year has been rather an unusual year trying to get these things put together, so. Well, it's always good to have a workshop to fresh out and ask the questions and, and get all of those details figured out yes absolutely absolutely um, so the resolution um, for the millage rate has already been approved and signed that is in your packet the one for the budget is also in there um, so what you'll want to do is um, make a motion to um, accept the resolution uh, for the for establishing the budget for 2022. And that is a roll call vote. 
soon as everybody finds that sheet. There's a lot of paperwork. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, I tried I'll to make move. less paperwork, but that's... I'll move cool. that we approve the resolution establishing the Clarkston Independence District Library 2022 budget as presented. Second. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the budget as recommended. We've hashed this out a lot. Here's your last chance. <laughs> Any more questions or comments about this? If not, let us call the roll. Okay, Dan Gaffney? Yes. Dan Green? Yes. Allison McFadden Kiesler? Yes. Nancy Moon? Yes. Marilyn Pomeroy? Yes. Ann Rose? Yes. Chris Shaw? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Motion. Cross that off the to do list. That's good. Motion <laughs> was accepted and passed. Very good. Thank you. Now, let's discuss the fine policy, since that's been going on now for several months. We have, yep. <laughs> We're looking forward to hearing the presentation there. So I'll do a real quick recap before I turn this over to Chris. Um, due to the pandemic, the library board voted to waive library fines for overdue materials through June 30th, 2021 to address the issue of the significant delay of the check-in of materials due to the COVID quarantine process. As a clarification, this waiver only includes fines for materials that have been returned past their due date. Fees incurred for lost and damaged items were still in effect the whole time. At the June 14, 2021 meeting, the library board started a discussion about whether or not to reinstate late fees. In recent years, librarians across the country have been reconsidering late fees as this is not necessarily an effective way to get materials back in a timely manner. It can create a barrier to service as an individual who incurs a fine um, they cannot pay, may not bring the item back at all, but simply abandon using the library altogether. The library board created a subcommittee, uh, Chris Nato, Allison McFadden Kiesling, and myself to review this issue. The subcommittee presented their initial findings at the August meeting. It was decided that the subcommittee would continue their investigation and focus on the need to address two issues before making a recommendation regarding this policy. The first issue, do we currently have an issue with materials being returned in a timely fashion without late fees? And the second, which was a little more pressing, was what other strategies could or should we consider to encourage the timely return of materials in lieu of late fees, especially for people who are waiting on holds for popular items. After thorough consideration of the various options, the Fine Policy Subcommittee will present their recommendation regarding how to proceed. And I'm going to turn that over to our Head of Circulation. <laughs> I see it's reluctant to let go of the snow. <laughs> it's always helpful to have an IT person handy. <laughs> well, while they're working on that, I want to commend Allison and Chris and Julie for really revisiting this area. Thank you. It was, it was a learning experience. I learned a lot. I really, I, I really enjoyed being on the committee. 
I always like the committee work because I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like you really get yeah. down into yeah. things better. You do research and you look yeah. at articles. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Look at other libraries. Yeah. I like the comment. Going fine free <laughs> is not going <laughs> consequence free. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. So, the main thing that we, Julie and I in particular, decided that was that we also needed to look out for those patrons who are doing the right thing by returning items on time <coughs> and waiting for items that are on hold requests that have not been brought back on time. We started that by doing an update to the policy. Um, and you can see here the parts that are in red. And there are a few other things I got rid of. Um, things like charges for certain types of materials that we can no longer provide, like specific discs for audio books, things like that. This used to say fines and fees policy, now it says fees policy. Um, we changed this wording to account balance, needing to be under $10 in order for the patron to use the account. And then I added some verbiage here um, that basically informs the patrons that um, they will be contacted if they have an item that's overdue that someone else has on hold request. Because unfortunately, patrons like that guy are suffering from the back on time. <coughs> How do I mean being more assertive? Basically, I will run a weekly report to find out which items are actually being requested that need to be brought back. Um, we'll be notifying patrons so they can bring those items back. If they do not do it after a week of having been contacted, then I'll manually list their items as lost. And anything that costs $10 or more will block the patron's account and prevent further checkouts and auto renewals. However, <laughs> <laughs> everything is in the detail. So before I can start, I needed to find out how my staff felt about everything. This is the data I collected from them. Making sure that they're actually comfortable. The last thing we need is somebody passing the rest of not making phone calls or <coughs> letting patrons know. So according to this at least, at least on paper, they're all comfortable with this. And that is the script I designed for them. This is the script for the phone calls. Uh, this below is the script for the emails. They're pretty much the same. The only real difference is that the phone call script is a little bit more personable, um, a little bit more <coughs> clear right here, whereas the email script kind of just gets to the point that these items need to be brought back. So we thank you for putting that in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically the way it works is the patron, like I said, has one week to return the over the item. After that week is up, that's when I record it as lost. Um, there are some items that cost less than $10 enforcement that won't block their account. Um, but anything that's $10 or more will block until they either return the item or pay for it. And I will only do this if the item has an active or request by another patron. If it does not, then it'll be business as usual. And I think 45 days before it goes to lost normally. Um, so, <coughs> patrons will still have access to computers. They'll still be able to use our resources, meeting rooms, events, and they can still place items on hold. They just can't check them out until they return the item. So, like we said, fine free does not mean consequence free. <laughs> Unfortunately, the side effect of doing a $100 fine limit during COVID is that it did create some laxity and some patrons. Um, we had patrons who were waiting for their items for several months and wound up going elsewhere for those items, whether it was Amazon or other libraries. So some patrons just need an incentive. Um, Julie and I strongly felt that that's been the missing piece in the fighting free movement is addressing that contact aspect of, of getting the items back. Anybody have any questions at all? 
just that I have a comment because library suggests that it's a lending institution, so we want it to go out, but we do want it to come back. Yes. And that's the main concern <coughs> that people don't have to wait. If the item is not in demand and it just gets auto renewed, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if it is in demand, then we want to make sure that other people have a chance to look at it. So I think that was the board's mm -hmm. primary right. concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm was the consequence for Right, not. because you don't want those people, the active users who are going through the process and putting the book on hold, mm -hmm. you don't want them to be no, penalized, penalized by not being able to get the mm -hmm. book that they're waiting for, the, the material that they're waiting for. So this, to me, seems to solve that. And what I, w I would like to say about your staff is they're not at all shy about explaining exactly when something is going to be due and how many renew, I mean, and they go in great detail, so they do a really good job with that already, and I think that they'll be fine with this next step. When does it go into effect? I will have a circulation meeting with them in January. Uh, I don't want it to go into effect until I've talked to everybody at the same time. So I have not chosen a date yet. In your research, did we come up, do we have a large number of people who are not returning books in a timely manner that are requested? It wasn't a large number, <coughs> um, but it tended to be newer DVDs mainly. Uh-huh. Because um, they have a shorter time Yeah, and those only go out for three days as it is. So giving them that extra week is really giving them three times longer than they should have it. Um, and there were some new books also. I wouldn't say it's a like a, an issue that's a huge deal, but it does happen. And I have had quite a few patrons tell me they no longer needed the item because they waited so long. Okay. Thank you for all of your work in this area. <laughs> and based on that, if there are no questions, I'll accept a motion on the fine policy. I move that we approve the updated circulation policy as presented. Second. Okay, Nicole, you got that? <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the updated circulation policy as presented. All questions being answered. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion is carried. Thank you to the committee for all that work. We appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Now we need to move to a review and approval of Allied Building Service contract renewal form. All this end of the year activity. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, for the past few years, we have um, had a comprehensive facilities maintenance contract with Allied Building Services. This includes a regular list of tasks that are monitored on a monthly, semi-annual, and annual basis. In addition to our regular as-needed work list, um, this has been a streamlined way for us to assure that our building is being maintained with a preventative mindset instead of constantly reacting to things that need to be repaired. The facilities coordinator oversees the task list to ensure everything is being completed as well as creating the monthly list of minor repairs that, that need to occur. So in terms of attorney, because this is a contract, um, the contract was originally reviewed by the library's attorney and the contract remains the same as 2021. Um, the renewal cost includes an increase of approximately 4%. There was not an increase in 2021. Payment of this contract is made monthly. So if, there, if for some reason the regular monthly service cannot be executed, which did happen in, in some cases in 2020, um, the library was not billed for those months. So it, there is a savings there if we're not able to get the contract. So we're not committed to that whole amount should there be some reason. Um, this is a budgeted item that has been included in the 2022 budget at this new rate. Um, there are actually um, a couple of little things that were added to it as well. Um, one of the things that, uh, just little, little tidbits of um, things to check and whatever. One of the things that Arlene had wanted to add to it was the maintenance of the um, the compressor that runs the fire suppression system because what's a board meeting if I don't say fire suppression at least once? <laughs> <laughs> um, and unfortunately, uh, Ally did not feel like they were qualified to do that. So we are going to contract that piece with the fire suppression company that we use. Um, but the other things that were added in here were um, some minor things. So 
primarily this is the same contract that we had from last year, other than a little bit of an increase in cost. But Allied's been very upfront with us about what they can do and can't do. Absolutely, absolutely. They have not said, yes, we can do that, and then not executed it properly. They come over and they take a look, and if they really think it's something that they can't or shouldn't do, they usually tell us. And in the case of the print compressor, that was one of the things they said they did not feel comfortable doing that. And the fire suppression company said that they would do it. So we will hire them separately for that one piece. I feel like 4% is a pretty moderate increase given that prices everywhere have been going up. Mm -hmm. Personnel costs are going up, material costs are going up. So 4% seems really reasonable to me. And there was not an increase last year, which, you know, given, given everything else, they could, have, they could have done an annual increase every year, right. but they did not do an increase right. last year. So. Okay, and this is a considerable savings over what would have happened had we hired mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. full time to monitor all of these things. Would right, because you would still have we would still mm -hmm. have to be paying for materials even if we right. were able to do the repairs or services mm -hmm. in house. And yeah, I think it is a, a a big savings over what we we might have otherwise done. Right, and we had quite a discussion on that several years ago. Yes, we went this way, and I. I've been very pleased. We have been too, and, and um, Arlene, our facilities coordinator, has been very pleased with the way that it, it happens. And she, um, she feels like she can be open if something doesn't get completed the way she feels. She feels that she can call our representative and make sure that things get taken care of. And, and every once in a while something happens that doesn't go quite the way she wants it, and they come in and they make it right. They've been pretty good about that as well. So You can't ask for much more than that, yeah. right? No. <laughs> All right, are there any questions? The cost is on the last page before the appendix. Mm -hmm. I will accept a motion. I move to approve the Comprehensive Facilities Maintenance Program contract with Allied Building Service as presented. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the Comprehensive Facilities Maintenance Program contract with Allied Building Services as presented. The annual contact cost will be $22,740 paid monthly. Makes looks better paid monthly. It does. $1,895. Okay, are any other comments or questions about this item? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion is carried. Number four, year-to-date financial report and end-of-year budget adjustments. All right, so you guys have been troopers through all this budget stuff. We've got a little more budget work to do this evening. Um, so you will see in the handouts that I put at your places, there is a, um, a trial balance report. Mm -hmm. Um, on the left is the 2021 budget with all the adjustments, adjustments that you've made thus far. On the other side is the year-to-date finances. And I have highlighted five items on the list that I have slight concerns about in terms of um, going over budget or that are slightly over budget at this time. So um, FICA, I've looked at that and I, f I feel like we need to um, nudge that one just a little bit to make sure um, this is always a little bit difficult to do at the end of the year because um, you can't calculate the, an even number of payrolls. Um, the last payroll of the year is always straddled, and so I'm just concerned that the FICA that I calculated based on 26 payrolls doesn't take into account that little extra week that may be in there. Um, so I'm recommending that we add another $1,000 um, to that FICA line just to make sure we've got enough so that we don't go over. Uh, the next one is the telephone line. Um, that one is, we put in 5,500, we're at 5,347 in terms of what we've spent so far. Um, that bill comes out to be about two to three hundred dollars per month. Uh, my only concern about this one is that when I went through and counted it out, it looked like we were missing a month, and so I feel like we may be a month short. Mm -hmm. So I'm just suggesting we put $500 in there to make sure that if there is a 12th month in there, um, Usually what happens is the December bill gets paid in January, but then the accountant always um, does, does a journal entry f to put that one back into last year. And when I was doing a quick count of the 12, I'm, I'm not confident that 
that we've got 12 of them in there and I just want to make sure we've got enough. <laughs> Um, so I'm recommending a $500 budget adjustment for that. Bank charges, um, also we had lowered that one down to $1,590 and I'm suggesting that we put in a little bit more for that because mm -hmm. um, that one is over budget a little bit already. Mm -hmm. Electric, um, similar thing there, we've got one bill left <laughs> for the year um, and that bill um, runs anywhere between 2000 and about 3200 depending on how much is going on in the building at any given time. Um, and we're, we're running a little bit close for comfort there, so I, I would just like to put a little more in there, put 3,000 in there to make sure we have plenty in there to cover that. Um, and then equipment maintenance, um, we are slightly over budget in that line. We did do some shifting around of some things and I think we just miscalculated that there was a couple things that were a little bit more than what we expected them to be. So I'm recommending we put $5,000 in that. So if you look, um, the professional and contract services line, uh, we budgeted $77,500. We actually had one project that um, came in, actually we had two projects that came in well under budget. Um, so there's only 59,967 that has been spent. So there's plenty of money in there to make all of these budget adjustments out of that line without any issue at all. So I'm recommending that all of it come from 818 um, and go into 715. 853-905-921 and 933. Um, and that can be done with a motion to approve the budget adjustments as presented. How, how much were you gonna put in bank charges? Um, $500, 500, just to be sure that there's plenty in there. Right, okay. <clears throat> it's always this end of year when she's moving some of them to last year and some of them to this year. And, and I always worry that I'm miscalculating and I, there's nothing worse than having Something go over budget just a smidge and the auditor call you out on it, so. <laughs> we like to keep our auditors happy. I like to keep the auditor happy, absolutely. And that still leaves a pretty nice balance in professional and contract services. Absolutely, we, we've paid off most of what's in professional and contract services for the year. We have a couple of, I'll say nothing is gonna come in at that level though. I'm, if there was a bill that was that big, I would know about it, so, yeah. All right, any other questions? I'll accept a motion. I move to approve budget adjustment as presented. I'll second. It was a race. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to. It's, they're moving $10,000 from 818. Right, to move $10,000 from 818 into five other accounts which are detailed, I'm not going to list them all, which counts $10,000. That spreadsheet will go into the minutes with everything else so that it, yes, it will be as present. presented. If there are no other questions or comments, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion is carried. Thank everyone for their work, especially Julie, putting this yes. budget together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that one. <laughs> And I will now accept a motion for adjournment. So move. Second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose nay. We are adjourned for 2021 at 720. And I thank everyone for good meeting and good year.